welcome to the Northern Counties East League podcast. I'm Richard Watts. I'm now joined by League General Manager Matt Jones. Hello everybody, welcome to the podcast. We're going to start this week by looking at the FA Cup and we had seven teams taking part in the first qualifying round of the FA Cup over the weekend. Congratulations go to Bottisford Town and Hallam who made it safely through to the second qualifying round. We'll come back to those in a minute. I'll also say a big well done to Campion, who earned a really creditable 1-1 draw against Blythe Spartans. Blythe Spartans currently a step three side. Last year they were playing in National League North against the likes of Scunthorpe. So quite a big step up in class. The game was live on BBC TV, which was fantastic. Campion had a record crowd to watch of 572. And it's amazing for the league that two years running now, we've had a game selected to be broadcast live on the BBC, following on from Tad Albion versus Chester last year. I haven't got the viewing figures for Saturday's game yet, but we know that previous year there were over 200,000 people watching the Tad game live on the red button. Absolutely brilliant for teams at our level to, to you know get live on TV. Really, really good to see. The teams that made it through, Hallam made the long trip up to the west end of Newcastle, probably 10-15 minutes from Newcastle City Centre, quite a long journey on the bus, playing Newcastle Blues starting from the Northern League. Hallam found themselves 2-0 down at half-time, came back to win 3-2, never been easy to go up to Newcastle and play, play the North East teams up there. Absolute great result for Hallam, well done to them. It's the first time Hallam have made the second qualifying round of the FA Cup for 18 seasons, so fantastic achievement. Bottisford Town, they recorded a 1-0 win at home against Loughborough Students. And everybody who's ever played against one of the students he's knows they're generally very useful sides. They recruit for all the university students coming from all over the country, all piled together and play football. Usually really, really good sides, very difficult to beat. Congratulations to everybody at Bottisford. That's the first time they've ever reached the second qualifier round of the FA Cup in the club's history. Absolutely brilliant achievement. Because of the FA Cup, there were only four games that took place in the Premier Division. Uh, Penniston Church strengthened their position at the top, winning 4-2 at Frickley Athletic. And although Penniston currently three points clear at the top, Gold Coast will still be fancying their chances they didn't play because of the FA Cup ties. And they've now got the three points behind Penniston at the top of the table with three games in hand. They were speaking Monday morning before Golka were playing tonight to Albion Stort. So by the time the podcast comes out, Golka may be top of the league. We'll see. Nine games went took place in Division 1. And special mention here for Maltby Main, playing their first home game of the season, some five weeks into the season. They've been doing a lot of improvement works down at Muglet Lane. The infamous slope has gone. Everybody who's ever been to Maltby knows what a, what a sloping pitch it was from side to side. They've levelled that off. They've done a lot of improvements, the new hospitality, a new uh, eating area, moved the dugouts, lots and lots of work been going on. And unfortunately, it's took a bit longer than planned, so they've requested the first few games of the season to be away. They've actually played four league games and a reverse league cup tie away from home before finally playing at home at the 6th or 10th this weekend. And they celebrated that in front of a fantastic crowd of 255 by beating South Leeds 4-1. So I'm sure they'll be relieved to, to be getting some home games under the belt finally. Um, the Northern Counties East League are delighted to announce their new official charity partner, which is Resuscitation Council UK. This is my eighth season involved with the league, and it's the first time I can remember us having a charity partner. Hopefully it'll prove to be beneficial for both sides. The league's teamed up with RC UK to help spread important, potentially life-saving information across communities right the way across the six different county FA areas that we cover. This is vital as out-of-hospital cardiac arrests currently affect over 100,000 people per year in the UK and the survival rate is less than 1 in 10. A person's chances of survival fall by 10% for every minute that they don't receive CPR or defibrillation. And research by the charity shows that areas around our region where our 42 teams are based, there are several cardiac arrest hotspots. What will the partnership mean for our clubs and communities? The charity is going to offer CPR training, both through their website and also at in-person events. And the good thing about these events is that they're not just looking at the football team, although any, any of our players, volunteers, managers, supporters, anybody that wants to do it can do it. 
They're also going to be looking at basing these events around the wider community, so involving local MPs, the schools, the local press, anybody in the local community that wants to come and learn how to do CPR could potentially save somebody's life. And the idea behind this is, once we've done an event, that people go and spread the word and teach other people how to do it. So hopefully it'll prove, with, with these cardiac arrest hotspot areas in particular, to have an impact. And hopefully, if, if it saves one life, it's a fantastic initiative. What will it mean? People at our grounds, there'll be posters around with a QR code on. If somebody collapses, somebody's in need of first aid, scan the QR code straight away on your phone you will get information on how to do CPR. So even if you've not had the training, straight away you get a two-minute in, in, instruction, step-by-step step of what to do. So potentially, even though if, you, if you've never had any medical training or anything like that, you could still help to save somebody's life. There'll be adverts in the match programmes, and they're also looking, putting a love heart or a, a heart-shaped symbol on, on everybody's club shirts. Hopefully in the middle of the shirt, but potentially could either go on the sleeve or on the back. Again, this will feature a unique QR code uh, just for our league. Somebody needs a first aid attention, scan the player's QR code on his shirt, and again, you'll get the life-saving instructions. Just to finish off, really, we're, we're excited by the partnership, and we hope that our clubs and wider communities will, will all benefit with it. Joined by Frickly fans uh, Ella and Josh, who are becoming regulars on the podcast. So Frickly this season, how, how's it been this season so far for Frickly? Um, they've um, been winning some and then they've um, played good um, in some games as well. What's been the best game so far? Um, Tadcaster away. What was the score in that one? 2-1 to, um, to Frickly and they played very well. That's a good result that, isn't it? Um, are there any new players this season? Who are your favourite players this season so far? Um, Louis Flates. What position does he play? I don't know. But he does well. That's good. What about you, Josh? Joel Spence. What position does he play? Um, midfield. Midfield. Very good. And Ella, I hear you're doing some volunteering at home matches. What, what are you doing? Um, so I sell like tickets and um, programmes. Very good. So is it record ticket sales and record programme sales? <laughs> yeah. Excellent. And you're playing for Frickly Under 10s, is that right? Yeah. How's that going? Good. Well, how many nights a week do you train for that? One. Um, and what position do you play? Striker. Are you going to get loads of goals this season? Have you had any matches yet? Yeah. Any goals so far? Uh, two. Very good. That's a good start. Who do you play this weekend? Um, Airedale. Will you beat them? I think. That's good. That's good. So what do you think Frickley will do this season? How, where do you think they'll be in the league? I think they'll um, play like mid-table. What about in the Cups? Do you think you could win the League Cup? Possibly, yeah. What about you, Josh? How do you, yeah. What do you think? Playoffs. Oh, that's good, yeah. What about the Cup? Do you think you can win the Cup? What about tonight? What score is it going to be tonight? 1-0 Frickley. <laughs> they won here last year, last year, didn't they? Yeah. What about you, Josh? What do you think? 2-1 Frickley. I hope you're wrong, but see, you'll probably be right. <laughs> so thank you, and we'll hopefully catch up with you later in the season. News coming of major ground developments at Goul, and I'm joined by uh, Bob to tell us all about it. Well, Richard, um, the the, the uh, club have been waiting for some time now um, about the update on the um, VPG redevelopment. And um, today on the Goul um, Facebook page, all, in all about Goul, um, the Goul Town Council, in conjunction with the Goul Town Deal Board, announced the other day that the grant has now come through of more than 2.2 million pounds from the um from the football foundations for for the pitch um so this this brings the total 
total cost of refurbishment to about 7.2 million. Um, so this 2.2 represents about 31% of the total money for the project. Um, but the, the, even now, though, to me, there's more questions than answers on all this. Um, because obviously, they're going to knock the main stand down in the coming weeks. Um, I understand, we understand that could happen in November, but that's to be still to be ratified. But what, what they're going to do um, before they start knocking the stand down, I, I, as I understand, is they're going to put porter cabinets in for the dressing rooms, uh, something for hospitality in the bar, but we, we've still got to see what all that's, um, all that's going to be look like. And I presume the, the crowd will, will all have to be congregated at the Dunnell Road side of the ground opposite the main stand, because that's the work that they're going to start on first. That's what, I, that's what I'm led to believe. How long, how long is it likely to take? Now that, that, that's a, that's a good question. Well, there's talk about. Well, I've seen I've seen a post tonight. Um, it was by the mayor who saying that they hope to hoping all being well to lay the pitch just before September, and, and he quoted the saying just before the season starts. Well, our season starts end of July, and if if you remember when they laid the Bottisford pitch, oof, it took five six weeks. Um, so. That's what 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 would we do there? That's that's something we've got to uh, look into. But is it also, going, is it going uh, to be an artificial surface? Yeah, it's going to be a four G. I when I spoke to the this is going back oh, eighteen months now. When I spoke, there was a um, what you call you could get conf consultation um, at the junction of the local council offices about eighteen months ago. I spoke to somebody from the FA or the architects now. And they said it'd be it'd be a really really top class um, Champions League pitch. Well, we'll see. And standard that would be lovely if it was. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> very lovely. Um, but yeah, so we'll have to see on that. But I, I, it, but as you know, sorry, I was going to say is is the athletics track going or is that going to be? Uh, no, I was coming. I was coming. I was coming. I was coming to that, Richard. Uh, right. The athletics track. You see. I don't suppose you can't you can't please everybody, but I do have a bit. I do have some somebody from athletics um, because there's been an 800 meter no 400 meter run track round the round the VPG for for years. I used to I mean there's this uh, one now, but there was a, a black cinder track going back many years ago. Yeah. Um, so they're going to lose that, and I think it's going to be a 300 meter track near the railway side at the bottom end of the ground. So. Um, so yeah, so but whoever whoever's been all who's put it all together, the um, the planners and all this, I suppose this is what they've um, this is what they've decided, you know. Um, but obviously the athletics people are upset at this. We're not going to understand because it's not just people in Goole that come here. Um, there's people from around the district, you know, come to uh, yeah. run on the track. Mm. So um, so that so they're, not, so they're not happy, which I can understand. But I suppose. Yeah, I Sorry. Say it'll have, it's going to have rugby league, isn't it, on it? Yes, rugby league. Now, in their announcements, um, they said that uh, the rugby league semi-professional club, well, they're not semi-professional at the moment, they're an amateur club, but I, there is talk about, uh, in the next season or two, of turning semi-professional and playing in League One, which I suppose if they did, if they did I mean, that would be good for Goole, uh, but it's, it would be a lot of expense because um, that's... Uh, that's not cheap for some of the teams that's been playing League One. Um, some quite some bit of travelling. But um, we'll see what happens on that one. But just going back to Goo, we yeah. need the club itself. Uh, and I know our chairman, Alan, has been trying to get this. Is some guarantees. Because at non-league clubs, football at non-league clubs, the revenue is so important, especially on yeah. match day. Yeah. For, for non-league clubs, you need the people coming through the gate. You need your sponsorship. You need your, your bar revenue on the day and you need your catering on the day. Now, at the moment, we have our we, we get the bar revenue because we have our own clubhouse, as you know, and the catering. But there's no guarantee. We've been asking the um, the people on the Gull Town Council and Board um, what's what's going to happen with the bar and the catering for the revenue because that's vital to 
income streams to to our club, you know. And um, the answer we got, I got back on the Facebook page today. That's still to be worked out. And um, but we we do realize what you've got the income is at the moment. So that's not a really guarantee to me. So that's there's more questions and answers um, on this. And I think the uh, supporters going forward will want to uh, want some guarantees that the club um, will get this. You know. Um, yeah. So we'll have to see. But it's, I understand it's going to be run for a, what they call a non-for-profit organisation. But as yet, we don't know who that is going to be. So we've just got, we've got to see, you know. Is the capacity increasing as now, a result yeah, of it? Yeah, well, they say, that the, the, they say that the improvements, this is what the consultants say, um, they say they will increase the number of visits to the VPG from 13,000 a year to 63,000. That's a three hundred and seventy-six pound, three hundred and seventy-six percent increase. Now, looking at the um, capacity, I looked at the because um, there's going to be a main stand, and now there was an artist drawing today, and I counted the seats. Looks to be about three hundred seats in the in the main stand, um, but it's going to be like a balcony, bit um, bit similar maybe to some a bit like Garford um, yeah. you know, there, and opposite the main stand, there's going to be. The dugouts are going to be transferred to the Dunnell Road side, where they're at the railway side at the moment, with two smaller standing areas, I understand, at uh, either side of them. So that's that's what it looks like on the uh, that's looks like what it looks like on the drawing, you know. So we'll, we'll have to see on that one. Going back as, to as when you were a, a, a sort of like at the top, of, uh, I mean, you were sort of well up, weren't you, non-league wise? What sort of attendances did you used to get in those days? Well, when we, when I was in the Northern Premier League back in the seventies, eighties, you'd get seven, eight hundred. But see, there wasn't then there wasn't Sky. It's, it's effectively like all non-league clubs. There wasn't Sky then and social media, and um, I think uh, that, that people probably could watch that uh, nowadays. But um, yeah, we I, I I do think if um, if we can get some guarantees on the incomes and, and, and maybe rosier times ahead. But as I said, at this moment in time, it's um, you just need to know some some something concrete from the Town Deal Board or, or the consultants, you know, does the club going forward. So, uh, but we'll see, I suppose. It's it's early days. I'm hoping to, I'm hoping, we're hoping to know something well, sooner than later, really. Um, yeah. Because the sponsors are going to be, the sponsors are going to be asking. Me. But I say they, they're putting these temporary facilities in, um, but we have to see what that looks like um, um, when, when it happens. Because as you know, I go around doing uh, sponsorship for the hospitality, and I've told sponsors that just after October um, there is going to be some facilities, but I don't know what they look like at the moment. So we have to wait and see on that. So I hope it's going to be okay, but we'll keep your fingers crossed uh, on that. You know. So we'll see, we'll see. So that's where we are. Very, potentially very exciting times in 12 to 18 oh, months' time. It, it's very exciting, but as I say, we just need some guarantees on the finance, you know, as yeah. um, um, going forward. Then, then, then yes, then, then it, that, it could be exciting, yes. But as I say, um, the, other sporting events, I mean, the Rugby League, we're using it, and there's other, like, Gull Town Junior Tigers, that they'll be able to... Once the 4G pitch is down, they'll be able to hire it out all the time, really, from maybe 9 o'clock in the morning until 9 o'clock at night, you know. So that's where the revenue, I would imagine, would come in if there's enough sporting groups around this area to to hire the ground, you know, not just the football club. Yeah. So and that, I think that's the idea, really. Next up, NCEL Talk, I'll hand straight over to host Aaron Walton. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the NCEL Talk. I'm joined tonight by Sai, Bob and Adam. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, so let's, I, I say, let's get started by having a look at last weekend's games. And if I may, I would like to start with the FA Cup first, first round qualifier, because there's some... I'll get on to the best stuff in a minute. So, alas, unfortunately, Barton Town didn't make history. They fell just short against Rugby Town, 1-0. Uh, 
There's a healthy crowd there, but it saw a really good goal by um, David Kolodinsky. Uh, it separated the two teams. It was a good cup tie. Uh, rugby bought a good few fans, and it was it was uh, all in uh, should we say good humour. I thought uh, it was uh, a good game. Uh, Tadcaster they succumbed to Macclesfield in the three 0 at home, but another excellent crowd there, four hundred and ninety. I've got to be honest that I thought there would be more there for that match because yeah, Macclesfield had a good following, you know, and I thought they'd get seven eight hundred easily. Uh, but it's still a good crowd, yeah. But you know, it's uh, yeah. Macclesfield was a very, very attractive tie, wasn't it, with Robbie Savage being the manager? You know. Mm. So yeah, I was saying with you, Bob. I thought they'd be probably double that. Um, yeah. Thackley had a real long trip to Warrington Rylands. Saw them lose four 0 didn't it? And still but, came but, up. But they, they, they was doing well. It was nil nil to about the 80th minute, wasn't it? Well, I've seen, yeah, <laughs> I saw three goals scored in 90 minutes. I'm sure it's um, <laughs> yeah. a typo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't score three that quick, surely. No, so, exactly. Yeah, so, and then um, Silsden came up short against uh, West Didsbury in Charlton 4-2. 958 there. So, again, another good crowd. So, what I want to do, gents, is that they're, they're, they're all the um, came up short, those uh, NCL teams. Let's have a look at the victors. I've, I've got to give a real big pat on the back to Bottesford. So, superb result for Mike Thompson's boys at Bottesford. 1-0 winners over Loughborough students. And they've got a, a tough away trip to Bromsgrove Sporting, haven't they? Yeah, it's not been very kind to us, the near draw, not, has it? Not really. So, But all, all the best to Bottesford in their journey. Uh, I wonder if they've made a bit of history. I, I wonder if that's the furthest they've been. I'm not sure myself. Um, Probably have yeah. Yeah, so well done to well done to uh, bosses who's playing some good football. Callum overcame a very good Newcastle Blue Star away three uh, two, and they were two 0 down at half time. But a quick fire double from Danny South and a late winner from Callum Ward sees a countryman through to play Farsley Celtic away again. I I I I don't think it's a romantic tie. However, I think it's a winnable tie. Yeah, yeah, it's a tough tough tie. It's a tough one, yeah. Uh, I'm sure Craig Denton and his boys will, will, will put a good performance up. And my last one, what a valiant attempt from Campion on Saturday. It was on the red the red button on BBC, wasn't it? Uh, it was. uh, and they, uh, they they drew 1-1, didn't they, at, at Campion? And they were very unlucky to lose uh, to Blythe in extra time, 3-1. 729 at that tie at Blythe, so that mm, was good. good mm, mm, so, mm. Hard luck to Campion. Just, just, uh, just, just going back to Bottisford, wouldn't it yeah. have been wonderful? Wouldn't it have been wonderful for them if they could have drawn Scunthorpe in second qualifying round? Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. That would Definitely. have been a dream tie for them, wouldn't it? Wouldn't I'd, have been just, really, I'd have been yeah. really pleased with them. I that would, would have been have, a dream tie. Yeah, definitely. It, it, it. Well, that's just, as we say, that's the look of the draw. <laughs> so, um, so last Friday night, another Friday night under the light, Albion 3 Eccles Hill 1. And Division 1, Si, come on in. Come on down, Si, the price is right. The, the match, what you were talking about last week, Horbury versus Wungwell. I know, I was saying about sort of what, what a great match it'd be and how it was, you know, one of those sort of top-of-the-table clashes that someone's record's got to go. And it's a nil-nil. <laughs> it's like, oh, yeah. 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 What, what I mean, maybe, way, it was yeah. Enter- maybe it was a really entertaining nil-nil because you can sometimes get them, can't you? But, you said, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I, I thought there'd be goals in that game and there absolutely wasn't. <laughs> Cancelled well, each don't... other out, didn't they? Cancelled each other out. So, um, so I will keep with the, we'll keep with the Division 1 on Saturday. So we saw Armthorpe beat Drumpill 2-1. So Armthorpe keep that reasonable, reasonably good form going. Athersley was, uh, lost 1-0 at home to Dernan District. 265 good souls at Shearing Park, so that's not bad for Athersley. They're getting a few there. Brink Town 2, Club Thorn 0, so Brink keep the good form up. Uh, Arrogate Railway Athletic 1, Wasborough 1. Ilkley 1, Wakefield 3. Die, back over to you. Did you go? I did. And I tell you, hey. it's, a really nice, it's a really nice setup there as well. Um, yes, yeah. yeah. It's obviously a new one to the league, isn't it? Because they come across from the northwest, and I don't, I don't know if you've been before, but uh, obviously it's up on the moors and what have you. So you've got great views, and um, the only downside, I think, not from us as fans, but certainly for the players, was it's a three G pitch. 
Yeah, yeah. So, so um, a few of our lads were saying it was like doing their knees by the end of the game because it does take oh. a bit of a toll, doesn't it? That sort of pitch. Um, yeah. But the facilities were great there, and it was a lovely sunny day. And Good. it's always better to come away with a win, and we came away with a three-one win. So I was very happy with that. Brilliant. Well, you're back onto the winning ways now, so that's the way feel we know. And it's always good to see you with it. You sorry, Adam. I was saying that's a good win as well because um, they looked a mm. very good team when I saw them a couple of weeks ago. I could see why they were third before we played them. You, you know, you, you can when you're playing a side, even if you beat them, you can see that they're organised and and where they're actually winning points. And uh, now nah, they were they were a very good team, and it was a well fought battle to win the to win the game. So uh, yeah, they're still going to be up there come the end of the season. So well done, Wakey. Uh, Louth two Swallowness nil. So Swallowness good form comes to a bit of a. Bit of a stop. Uh, Malt before South Leeds won. 255 at Muglet Lane. So, they're getting a few fans back, aren't they, down at, uh, down at Maltby? That's a good crowd for Maltby. Um, uh, Nostel won, Shelley won, and Selby 2, Yorkshire Amateurs nil. That rounds up Saturday's games for Division 1. So, if we go into uh, Premiership, uh, Frickley lost uh, 4-2 to Pediston. Uh, Hansworth lost 1-0 to Parkgate and uh, Nesbury beat Rossington 2-1 so Adams team lost 2-1 uh, and Winton Rangers picked up a good win against Pickering 2-1 so there's a lot of topsy-turvy teams out there winning one week losing the next etc etc so it's uh, it's certainly not cut and dried at, at the start of the uh, start of the campaign is it so let's have a look busy midweek all starts on Monday Monday night, didn't it? Albion three, goal could two. So, a good win for Albion. Tuesday, uh, my Barton Tam were uh, at home to free clean a 1-1. Uh, game of, a, a classic game of two halves. Barton were terrible first half. Frickley were brilliant. Quicker to the ball. Uh, moved faster. Good passes. Scored early on. Uh, comes in at half-time. I'm sure the manager gave him a, 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 a rollicking. Well, he did because I heard him. <laughs> and Barton come out second half, completely different team, played really well, scored. There was a big, big, I don't know if you've seen the highlights or it shows it. There was a shot that that, that went, that they say it went in, but the keeper flicked it out and linesman said it didn't um, didn't go in, but he wasn't quite positioned. So he should have really said, I can't give, I can't give you a decision because I want there. Referee couldn't see it. And then we've only ourselves to blame because Tom Wardby cuts in on the wing, puts it on a plate to one of our lads. I won't say who it was to embarrass him. And instead of just placing it, and he blasted it, and it went over the bar, over the netting, and it's down in the Humber at the moment. So it was that way. <laughs> so, but it was one all. So uh, it, it set up nicely for goal on uh, on on Friday night. Bottlesford two, Silsden three. So um, Bottlesford uh, just. Lost out there to Thilsden. Uh, do we have to go on to this one, Bob? Goal oh, nil. Yes. Goal yeah. nil, exactly three. Did you go, Bob? I, I went, uh, but I missed the first half because I was doing volunteering duties so I can get money out, lottery, etc. Oh, so yeah. I saw the yeah. second I saw the second half, which I think was better than the first half because we were yeah. losing 2-0 two, two oh, at half time. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the best team won. I mean, goals, I think the confidence is low at the moment, really. Um especially after Tadcaster result last week. Yeah. So all I can say is I just hope we can play better tomorrow night at Barton and um and just play better and, and score a goal away. So far we've played four games away and scored zero and conceded oh. fifteen. Oh so dear. Oh, that is not good. No, but I'm not saying anything, Bob, because it'll be the kiss of death. Um but you've still got a lot of the plays you had last season when you played us last season. Uh, yeah, we have, we have, we have, but we signed, we have signed some new players, you know. Um, yeah. So uh, we had a new, we had Harry Spoon who made his debut for us on the, on Tuesday night, uh, and I think I think he, he played all right. But when you lose three 0 there's nobody nobody's going to shine um, yeah. at, at that really. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, just let's hope for a, we can get the uh, get a result tomorrow night. Well, I hope you don't, but <laughs> you know what. <laughs> <laughs> so right, we'll, we'll go on to we're going to Nairsborough for Tadcaster Nil. Three hundred and twenty there three there. So that was a good crowd at Nairsborough. Very difficult place to go, Nairsborough. Uh as somebody once said to me at Barton, you're getting out there and you certainly don't get out there at Nairsborough. So a good win it's for Nairsborough. Up a bit as well. 
because, um, like I say, we're struggling, but we're kind of around bottom two, three a few weeks ago, and they seem to have got a few decent results and they've climbed themselves up into mid table at the minute. Yes, I've noticed that, Adam. They've had two or three good results, haven't they? So, um, they had a real good start last season. I think somebody was intimating they had a real good start last season and they've had a real poor start this season, but still early enough, like you say, to, to get it around. They are a good thing there, but they've got some good players. A good manager, so I think they'll. Uh, I think they'll be there or thereabouts. So it was a good win against Tagcaster, who were a little bit. You never know what you get with Tagcaster. It's a bit Jekyll and Hyde. They're probably still licking the wounds on from Saturday. Uh, Parkgate one, Pickering three. Well, Pickering, aren't they up and down? Hey, mm. I mm. can't believe it. They'll, they'll lose one week. Then what a good win away at Parkgate. So well done, Pickering Town. Um, mm. Really good win. Uh, Division one, Appleby probably Froddingham, or as we call it round here, App Frod. Nil, Glass Houghton three. Good win for Glass Houghton. Uh, and then in the Premier, what a game. Eccles Hill six, Beverly Town five. How many teams go away to score five goals and still lose? Yeah. That is amazing, yeah. isn't it? It certainly is. Um, I don't think Dave Ricardo will be very happy, but to score five goals, um, that's good. I see they've got Eddie Birch playing for them now. I think he's dual signed with uh, Bridlington, so he'll, he'll, he'll add a bit of stability and experience to Beverly's young team. So I think Beverly hopefully are going the right way. Uh, put a good performance in there. Peniston two, Hansworth two. Good result there. And Division one, Maltby three, Yorkshire Amateurs one. And Wasbra nil, Harbury four. So that's a good win for Harbury away at Wasbra. Um, I'm going to go on to the NCL Cup second round. Bricktown two, Rossington two. Now, I know somebody not far away was at the match, Adam Gittins. I was. Good <laughs> I was the match. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few of us there, wasn't there? What did you think, yeah. Adam? Um. I know it were a cup game, but I'd kind of say a draw were a fair result. Um, I thought both teams had plenty of chances. And, um, yeah, both teams played some good good football as well. And um, quite a few quite a few chances as well, both ways. Like, um, quite an open game. Um, yeah. Um, like I say, Brig nicked an equaliser. Literally, one at last touches the game to take it to penalties. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, a good game all, all in all, I thought. Um, tricky conditions in the first half as well. Uh, it but, was, wasn't it? Yeah. Kind of, you, kind of, sorry, go on. What did you think to the disallowed goal? I know you've got it on your on your, on your video. <clears throat> was it a foul on the keeper? It's hard to, it's hard to say. I can see it yeah. from both sides. Yeah. Um, but nowadays, like you say, it's um, probably a couple of years, a few years ago. Yeah. It been given. But, yeah. um, like I say, it, it's very hard to say. I mean, I've seen Briggs' um, video as well, which uh, which is a better angle of it. And um, I think it's just one of the things, mm. a few players go jumping in the air, there's going yeah. to be some contact somewhere. So yeah. Yeah. I'm sitting on the fence a bit here, but yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. I, 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 it's one of them, it probably could have gone either way. And yeah, it could have done probably probably too much. But, well, then Josh Batty, he took it around the keeper and it, he didn't give it enough, did he? And it just hit the post, didn't it, and come back out. So it could have been it could have been 2-2 two, two all earlier on. And then, but what's, what about the penalties? Weren't there some good penalties taken? Oh, super. That's how you take a penalty, absolutely. It just, blasted. I mean, Pretty much all of them got blasted, so... They didn't. Well, I know, um, uh, is it Lewis Hill, the keeper for Brig? I know he used to be at yeah. Rossington. That yeah. first yeah. one, uh, I mean... He got across to it, got two hands to it, but it just just went straight in, didn't it? I mean, yeah, it, 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 was, just it. It. yeah it was it was yeah. it was good, but I think uh, Rossington maybe you I, just obviously shaded it with with the penalties, but they've got some really good players at Rossington, haven't they? Yeah, you know? I think yeah, I think like I say, if we can, we've got. I think going forwards, we're really good, and um, it's just like I say, just a bit of experience at the back because mm. we've got. It's a very talented backline, but it's a very young and inexperienced backline. So yeah. I feel like Greg Young's not not started a game this season. Uh, yeah. He's been injured. Who usually commands the backline? Um, so I feel like I can get someone with a bit of experience just to mm. help the young youngs out a bit. I think we'll be. Definitely. I think we'll do well. 
I think going going forward, I like Basil Z- 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 Zatos. Zatos, he yeah. looks good. He looks pretty quick. Uh, it's yeah, just first time I've seen him playing. Yeah, really it's just that, just that final that final shot. You know, he makes the, slightly makes the the wrong decision, but definitely look good. Who's the young number nine? Looks like Billy Casper out of Kes. <laughs> um, Lewis Gray. I was, um, I was impressed with him. He looks a very young lad, but yeah. he looked he looked very confident and he looked good. So I think that's a prospect for the future. He's probably about <laughs> thirty two, knowing me. But he looked, <laughs> he looked, he looked about yeah. sixteen. But he looked, yeah, he, I think he's, 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 he's only. I think he's about sixteen, seventeen, something like that. Yeah. But he's going yeah. to be a cracking player. Yeah, I think he played for our goal under eighteen last year. Oh, did he? Oh, there you go. Well, he's a good player. He's a good player, Bob. He's a good mm-hmm. prospect there. Mm-hmm. So, um, let's have a look uh, at Saturday's games then. Oh, Friday night. We've got to talk about Friday night. Sorry, Bob. Friday no, night. Do we have to? Do we have to? <laughs> uh, Friday night football under the lights. It's Barton Town's yeah. start, uh, turn to en- um, entertain Ghoul AFC. So, I shall be yeah. seeing you tomorrow night, Bob. Um, well, all, all being well for a good clash. Hopefully, it doesn't end up like it did last time with Barton and Goal. Oh, I don't mind that. I didn't think you would. What was it, three or four nil to you guys? Something like that. But we had we had Bryce playing for us then. We've no longer got Bryce. Yeah, we didn't yeah. He was yeah. a good player. But the, but you had uh, the big the big lad Bolton McQuedza, is it? Yeah, but he, he, he's he's away at the moment. I think so. We don't think he might be back. I don't know. Well, I, hope I, don't, he, I, don't, I hope he I hope he is because he's still good. <laughs> I, I can't give any details away. I'll, I'll have Rian on me back. Oh, so, no, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, don't worry. Oh, you sound like the officials at Stockport Town. You can't look at the you can't look at the um, team sheet until the referee's seen it and think all I want to do is just make sure you can write it down, do you? Me, it's like the Premier League. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's Friday. Saturday, we've got some good times. We've got Albion against Nairsborough. That'll be a good, good game. Bottlesford entertain Frickley. Hands with them Pickering. And this is, I've just marked this, this is my target around this one. Peniston versus Rossington. That'll be a good one, won't it, boys? It will. Really good. Yeah, I think that's yeah, a good one. Yeah, I mean, they were looking pretty good, Peniston. Um, and like I say, hopefully Rosso, that winning cup could pick up a bit of form. And yeah. It should be a good game. I think it'll be a good game, yeah. Silsden play Eccles Hill, so that's a, that's a, like a Bradford derby. And Winton then ten Thackley. So Winton have just started to, to pick up a bit. So I think they'll do all right. So we're going to uh, Division 1. Looks like there's a full picture list. Dern and District and Brig. That'll be a good game. Dronfield and Athersley. Uh, Glass Houghton and Armthorpe. That should be a good tie. Uh, Harrogate Railway Athletic versus Applebury Froddingham. Shelley versus Selby. Uh, South Leeds and Nostell. Swallowness and Maltby. And Si, Wakefield versus Louth. You must fancy your chances there because Louth have uh, they've stuttered a little bit, haven't they? They're a bit hit and miss, but if we catch them on a hit day, then yeah. as, we, as, as we saw last season and sometimes they, any team can beat anyone else on their day if it's their day. If it's their day. take anyone is. lightly. So, yeah. I, um, I, think... I saw our manager's comments this week and we're not taking them lightly. We're not thinking it's a pushover. We know they're a hard team to beat. They've had a couple of good wins lately. They yeah. might have been sort of like in mid table, but they've mm. done they've done well in, in games. Um so yeah. Although yeah. you if you're gonna finish in the top half of the table and looking for playoffs and promotion, mm. these are the games you have to be winning. Yeah. Definitely. So we should be looking to win it, but yeah. we have to take it seriously and, and just give hundred percent on the day, and I'm sure we will do. And don't you think at step five and step step six, a lot of teams can go into a game playing with one hand tied behind the back due to availability of players. That can uh, be an issue as well, yeah. and then yeah, with anything like that with injuries as well, and it's always got to be a, and it's difficult to try and keep a team as a, as a whole unit happy because if yeah. players aren't playing, they're going to want to go elsewhere. Oh, so oh, yeah, you've right. got to rotate as well and, and keep everyone yeah. happy. And getting that dressing room atmosphere is uh, is probably key to it, isn't it? It is. It's it's a difficult balancing act. I think you've got to be uh, you've got to be a good plate spinner as a manager at this level. I think. Um, so, and the last tie uh, in the di- in Div 1 is Yorkshire Amateurs versus who do they play? Club Thorn. Uh, oh, Club Thorn. Yeah, I put CTC down and I've forgotten who it was. <laughs> <laughs> Club Thorn. So, again, Club Thorn, 
Um, Yorkshire Amateurs, it's a difficult place to go up at uh, Bracken Edge. Um, not one of the best pitches. Uh, so it could be a, a bit of a, a bit of a game for them there. Um, and then next week, we've got, again, midweek games. We've got the League Cup second round, haven't we? Some more ties. Armthorpe and Hansworth. Now, that'll be a good test for Hansworth at Armthorpe. Um, I don't know which way it's going to go. I, I possibly think maybe Hansworth have got a little bit too much for Armthorpe. But again, depends what team you put out. Um, Durnan District, they play Barton Town. I've never been, so that'll be a new ground for me. Uh, has anybody been to Dern? Uh, no, I, I bet Adam has. No. Yeah, I've been to Dern. Yeah. What's it like, Adam? Is it a good ground? It's it's not bad. It's one of them the kind of developing all the time. It's kind of one of them every time you you look on, they've got a new stand or something like that. Yeah. So it's one of them that I think they've only it's only like the they used to play somewhere else. I think so. I think it's yeah one of the first years of this of a kind of developing yeah. it as we go, but yeah. it's got potential with a lot of a yeah. lot of space to to build on them. Oh, that's good. Well, I'll 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 have a look. I like to go to my new grounds uh, uh, and, and and see what it's like. So that's Durnan District and Barton. That'd be a tough tie for Barton. Uh, Pickering play Harrogate Railway, so that'd be that'd be a good game. And Thackley play Ilkley, so that's sort of a a localish derby, isn't it? That one. Yeah. Um, and then in the Prem, in midweek, Beverly. Let's see if they can get onto winning ways. They've got Golker, another tough game for Beverly. Uh, at Golker at home at uh, the uh, I can't remember where they play now Beverly no, no, no one no, I completely no. forgot no. I was going to say the Westwood and that's <laughs> that's going out of Beverly <laughs> do you me you know when you bra- I won't say my brain freezes because they haven't got one but do you me Alan played Tadcaster that'll be a good game can Tadcaster can Tadcaster work the slope at Hallam at Sandygate and Ty again, Wakefield very busy. They've got Glass Outen at home, so another another uh, potentially difficult tie. Yeah, another little derby type, you know, style as well. I mean, it's not quite Wakefield and Glass Outen, but it's got a Wakefield postcode. So yeah, um, yeah, it's a look, it's a localish game, is that one? I hope, um, oh, I hope there's no handbags again like there was last time when you were playing. Uh, who was you playing? And there were there was a few handbags on the pitch. Oh, when Horbury and Wakefield were having a bit of a, the players having a bit of a scuffle, weren't they? But yeah, yeah it was just a, it was a bit of punchy shovey. It was it was it was, it was, it was yeah. it's a, bit, a bit like ice hockey without the punches. <laughs> 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 and then um, Wednesday we've got another another couple of League Cup games, second round. Campion and Peniston. Whoa, what a good tie that is! Uh, and South Leeds play Bottesford. That'd be a nice test for South Leeds to see how they do against Bottesford. Now Bottesford. Obviously, they've got the 4G pitch, so they're not used to playing on grass uh, as much, are they? So we'll just see how they play at that. It's because it's a big old ground, isn't it, at South Leeds? That's all that, to be fair. It's... Yeah, with a running track around it. and just you could... Have they still just got the one massive stand? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just, just that one more. It is a massive stand. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so basically, that's, that's covered everything. Now, I was last week. I was chatting about uh, gate prices, you know, admission fees, and uh, was looking at what clubs are, are doing what. And um, I was going to open it up to you guys. Do you think? Do you think our leagues are value for money? Definitely. Definitely. You think? Yeah, you think they are, Bob. You would say yeah, that because you're charging seven quid. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, but also if you got a season ticket. Uh, like a concession beforehand, it was uh, sixty pounds. Uh, yeah, sixty pound. I mean, that's for 19, 19 games. Yeah. If you came, if you came every game, that's ninety five yeah. pounds. So you're saving thirty five quid. You know. Yeah. That was the that was the early bird price for a concession. You know. And that's that's nineteen. Well, not nineteen Saturdays, but you know, like your nineteen games, you're going to be entertained, hopefully. So yeah, if you put it like that, it's, it is value for money, isn't it? Um, yeah, and we have not had a price increase at Gould oh, for for about four or five years, you know. Well, that's that's brilliant, that, because well, a lot of clubs to do tend to put a pound on every year, don't they, if they're not careful. Oh, uh, I oh. think you've got, to, you've got to be very careful, aren't you, guys, not to not to pitch it slightly high. I mean, some people grumble. I mean, it always used to be a fiver. 
and some a lot of people are grumbling that it's six pound. You know, it was easier at a fiver that type of thing. But when because I didn't sort of uh, factor this in, referees, referees and officials they need paying, and their their prices are going up every year, aren't Absolutely. they? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so you, you, you even little things like your cost of electric for your floodlights and stuff. You know, there's, there's all that sort of stuff to factor in. Well, I, you, I, I you see, yeah, there's, there's yeah. running costs for every club, isn't well, there? And obviously, the one, thing I, the yeah. one thing on this I want to sort of cover that I find quite inconsistent. It's quite consistent with the adult prices: five, six, seven pounds across all yeah. of them. Yeah, it's, it's your under sixteens or any or children where it varies. Where some people it's half price some people it's free for under 16s yeah some it's under 12 if there's no consistency in the age levels yeah and that that's the part that i find because sometimes you think oh we're going you know we've got a game to go to away and there's obviously me and the two boys might be and then you think yeah. it's just one pricing but then there's actually got to pay for both the kids as well which is quite surprising because yeah. generally it's a lot, a lot of clubs you don't have to pay for them well, not yeah. that I don't, not that I object to paying for them, but I just it's just that inconsistency with, inconsistency, with clubs on yeah. some do yeah. and some don't. Yeah, it's, it's it's very very hit and miss, isn't it? And I mean, what you what we want to be doing is we want to be getting kids in and getting them hooked and and enjoying it, you know. And and, and if it's going to put, especially families, if they've got two or three kids with them, it, it can work out quite expensive because they'll want food, even if you say you can't have any, they'll still want food. Yeah. Or, they'll want, or they'll want a, um, a drink. And they? if you let them in for free, you know, if you have them free entry, then they're going to pay something at, at your, you know, your concession stand and what have you and get some food and drink. Sure. Whereas if, it, if they've got to pay to go in, they might sort of not, not want to do that anyway because it's not yeah. like a... Yeah, it, it takes away that family sort of... It does, doesn't it? Day out. Yeah, it does. And I mean, you know, if, if you think, oh, great, kids go free, that's brilliant, yeah. You, you, you feel sort of... Um, that you want to spend a bit, don't you? Just to put a bit back into the club. So it, it's a difficult tightrope. I know, I know clubs struggle. Um, I know players need paying, like you say. I know. I always thought the floodlights were on um, track to diesel, but oh, <laughs> 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 that's against the law. <laughs> but uh, it's I still think... vastly cheaper than any league football, though. My, my, my best mate last week, him and his lad went down to a Chelsea game to watch them yeah. down there. Yeah. So what would it cost for them to do that? We yeah. could go watch our team for a full season. So yeah, well, for me, yeah. you know, easily. Yeah. For me personally, it's like I well, I go and watch my team, Doncaster Rovers. And the thing I love the most about non league is it is it's that community thing. It's a kind of thing where you go to like, you know, any EFL club or something like that, you're just another number. Whereas you come here, everyone knows everyone, you know, it's a community, yeah. like a lot of volunteers, stuff like that. You know, same person like selling programs all the time, doing the lot, uh, doing the raffle at half time, and it's like, you know, you see them week in, week out, and you know, you're thinking you're paying five, six quid to to come in. You know, you know everyone, and it's just, yeah, that's it's what it's about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Spot on you're spot on when you're watching the Ethel Club to be able to do that. Yeah, it it is, and I mean, like last night, I mean, you knew plenty of people there, didn't you, at Brig uh, and well, Rossington? Yeah, I mean, you must have spoke to everybody. I think that's, that's the thing as well. I I didn't. Um, I know all the Rosso lot, but all the yeah. Brig lot. We're just coming up and you know we're just having a chat and stuff like yeah, that. It was, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Can, you know, you can do that. It's yeah. That's because you were stood next to me, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to joke you. I wanted to joke you. We were still enthralled in the game, weren't we? Because it was a really good game. Um, Are you getting spotted yeah, for yeah. selfies and that yet, Adam? Sorry. Are you getting spotted for like getting people do selfies? What have you? Are you, are you like one of the spotted YouTubers now when pe when you go to people's <laughs> grounds, like they look out for you now? Um, I've had a few recognize me. Um, I got asked for a photo once at the Rovers, which were thought quite strange, but <laughs> wow, wow, that's good. That's good though. You've got plenty of followers, so that's really good. And I don't want to be blowing smoke up your bum, but you, you do a really, really good job with these uh, these blogs you do and, and videos. They're really good. So. Thank you. That's all right, yeah. I, I enjoy watching them. They're good. Um, so, um, there was a little bit of an unsavoury um, incident, wasn't there? It was Bro versus Harbury. There was. Uh, did you hear about I, it, Bob? I did because, we, 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 as you know, Google, we, we, we sort of keep an eye on things like this due to our um, behind-closed-door game the other yeah. week, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, but but, but, it, but um, it's, it's, it's really sad that somebody's got to go to hospital 
um, yeah. due to this, you know. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was only last week when we were wrapping up this podcast. Yeah. I said that this is because we had another incident, didn't we, where it was yes, someone was threatening a player. And I yeah, said, this, yeah. is, this is something that's happening more and more at non-league. And here we are a week later and we've got another issue another one. Yeah. Where, where there's actually been violence. And credit to, credit to both clubs, they've come out basically and condemned it and said they're going to find this person and ban them and what have you, which is absolutely the right thing to do. But it shouldn't be happening. I don't know. I don't, it, it doesn't seem to be... It going away that, at the moment, doesn't it? No, it, it, I'd like to say it's definitely out of character because it doesn't happen much. But like you say, that's die. <clears throat> it's happening more, isn't it? That's yeah. the thing. Is this, is this yeah. because we're seeing more people come from like a league football? And I'm not sort of tarring any brushes, but yeah. fans that come from league football that maybe we keep saying about you know, the prices, maybe they're priced out of going to see the club, so they come and watch the non-league, but they've yeah. still got that league mentality. And I'm not saying that all people, because I'm sure Adam's not like that when he goes to watch Doncaster, for example. But do, you know what I mean? that every All clubs have got little pockets of those sort of fans, and if they can't get to those games, yeah, is it filtering into non-league, maybe? Possibly. Yeah. I mean, I know. It, it is. It, it happens at goal, you know. It's, it's yeah. Easy. Uh, and I do, think you, when, do you see anything that uh, Adam at Doncaster games of, of that sort, or, or is it because it's a bigger club? Is it kind of eliminated easier? Um, you get the odd, you get the odd thing. It's kind of nothing really escalates. You get the odd chance here and there, but um, you know you very rarely see anything happen. Uh, I'm sure it does sometimes, but like I say, it's um, you know. Out of, out of out of the eye, if that makes sense. Um, but I think, unfortunately, it's one of the things. It's it's one of the things. I think, like I say, it's um, in my opinion, non-league's never been as popular as it is now. And um, mm-hmm. with that, you're gonna get a few idiots who you know don't usually, who wouldn't have usually gone before, who are coming now. So it's yeah. I it's, 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 it's it's probably, I think there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things to that 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 come together. I mean, there's the like you say, there's the odd idiots that come, but there's also there's you've got to factor in alcohol as well because we can have a we can have a drink out with there and you can take a drink as long as it's in, in a plastic cup, you can take a drink out and stand around, can't you, and watch, especially at our levels, which is nice. Uh, not so much in the winter because you keep going to the toilet, but you know, you can do you do them sort of things. And um I think sometimes society as well, it, it, we seem to be a bit of a nation with a short fuse at the moment, don't we? <laughs> mm. So yeah, there's, yeah. there's that, there's that as well. So there's a lot of things to factor in, and all the clubs are run by volunteers. We're not professionals. Um, we're not. Uh, we're not uh, like stewards, are we? Uh, we're not trained like stewards. We haven't got the facility for lots of stewards. So it's very, I very difficult. I think of the finances for it. That, 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 that's the, that's exactly. the issue, isn't it? Is, yeah. is the fact that when we're talking about league clubs because yeah. they have the, the income so they can pay for stewarding. Whereas yeah. at this level, the last thing clubs need is an uh, extra yeah. expense. Yeah, we got yeah. we 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 paid a lot in transit last season, last year, well, last two or three seasons really, and um, yeah. it's, it, it, it's a club financially, and this is what's um, you know that's people uh, some, the young the younger elements I would say have got to understand, you know. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, uh, well, it, there's a lot of there's, a, as I say, it's it's isolated incidents, but it's becoming sort of mm. every week we're talking about it now, aren't we? So as I say, there's a lot of things involved, but you know, I think Work Worsborough and Harbury have, have, like you say, Si have come out and said, you know, there's no place for it. There is no place for all clubs. No, I agree. You know, and I'm going to speak for all clubs in the NCL. I don't care. I get into trouble or not. We don't want that type of people coming to our game. It's as simple. Yeah. As that. If you want to cause trouble, please don't come. We're trying to we're trying to get family oriented football. Uh, people come down and 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 meet people and be friendly. Yes, you have a little bit of banter, but that's about as far as it goes. A little bit of name calling. That's about as far as it goes. It's, it's annoying where the line is, isn't it? Yeah, and sometimes that's blurred, isn't it? I know we also we all sometimes see the red mist, and you know if your team's not doing very well, and we're passionate about it, but you know it's a game at the end of the day. There's always next week, so you know it's it's, it's a difficult one. But 
Uh, I think we have to talk about it, don't we? Because uh, you can't sweep it under the carpet. It's got to be spoken about. So um, I hope that fan was okay as well. But, you know, yeah, yeah, we got to talk to him obviously because yeah, that can put people off going. So can, you know, as much yeah, as anything yeah. else, but hopefully, make, hopefully he's all right. He's made a good recovery, and yeah. hopefully, don't put, put him off going to support him. Yeah, we well, send our best wishes to whoever it is, and uh, if you want to come down to Barton Town or Goul or Wakefield. Or uh, Rossington, I'm sure we'll look after you. <laughs> so, uh, so with with that, gentlemen, I think it's uh, uh, looking like we've covered everything. So, Bob, me, and you will see each other tomorrow. The the uh, I, well, they don't like Humberside anymore. Do There's no such county, but uh, it's, it's your, yeah, you're, not, you're Lincolnshire. Right? You're in. But yeah, it's a, it's a Lincolnshire. No, Lincoln. It's the Humber Derby. The Humber Derby, yeah. Yeah, Derby. yeah. and uh, uh, what game are you going to, Adam? Uh, are you going to Doncaster? Doncaster at the weekend, and then depends if I've got a car for next week. <laughs> for where <laughs> I go, to be honest with you. There's, so a, we'll see. there's, a, there's a few. There's a few games. But as Adam thought, you could go to. To be fair, I was thinking about Wakefield, because I can get there on the train. So All right. Maybe, see you, on, maybe see you on Tuesday, we'll see. Yeah, oh, that'd be a good one. Oh, yeah, be good. Yeah, yeah, you might, you might see Adam Stein. So, uh, so, so all, all it leaves us to do is to say to everybody at the NCL who goes to watch him, enjoy your football, and we'll see you all next week. That's it for this edition. If you've got any news for the podcast or you'd like to appear on the podcast, please email ncelpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.